Hello, you. That was a picture of um, Chez Panisse, an amazing restaurant here in Northern California. Welcome, guys. How are you? This is Christine Pereira from Soulful Selling. Hi, thanks for joining. Good to see you. Um, this is Christine Pereira from Soulful Selling Boot Camp, um, and I wanted to talk a little bit about Soulful Selling today. And the topic is why what cooking can teach us about sales. So I'm going to give it a couple minutes and um, see if a few other people join. Um, great to see you guys. Where are you from? And I'm curious what your favorite dish is to cook. Um, now I'm trying to think of mine. But I'm, I can't think of one specifically that I love, but it's summer. So anything with tomatoes is like amazing because we still have great tomatoes here in Northern California. Um, but why is, what can we take from cooking that we can apply for sales? So I've had a couple of interesting conversations with people recently about selling and the sales process. And when I talk about sales, I always talk about three things. I talk about confidence, which is confidence in yourself. Um, trust, which is building the trust with your potential customer. And the sales process, which is kind of the nitty gritty of sales, right? It's like making sure you put in the time to make enough calls. It's following up with those people. It's tracking the people that you've talked to um, and doing things like that. And that's where I think that there is um, analogy to cooking. Because I love cooking, but I won't say that I was always a great cook. Um, a couple years ago, I had a food business with my husband, and I had the opportunity to work with an amazing um, professionally trained chef. So I kind of call that my own culinary education. And I learned so much from him. So I learned, I would say the main three things I learned were to pick great ingredients, to use a lot of butter and salt, <laughs> and the third one was really to organize. Um, and that there's a whole process to cooking. Like I used to be the kind of person who would cook and would kind of wing it. I'd find like some very complicated recipe and I would try to throw it together at the last minute. And then I would get very frustrated that it didn't turn out correctly. And I realized from him that if you're making one meal and or especially if you're planning like multiple meals, there's so much planning that goes in into um, into cooking. So, you know, then I kind of transitioned and I would take time. I would actually read the entire recipe before um, trying to execute it, which seems very obvious, but, um, you know, not everyone does. I would make sure I had all the right ingredients um, in front of me. I would do all of the prep work, you know, and get all of the ingredients ready in front of me before I started cooking, make sure I had all the right equipment out and then it was clean instead of trying to find it while something, some other part of the recipe was being done. And I would really get organized and make sure I was ready so I could make my meal a success. And I think that is what is very similar to sales. Because if you understand sales and the sales process, you understand that there is a lot of planning that goes into it. And skipping that step is going to make you, put you in a position where your sales are not as good as they could be. So a great example is someone who has a small business. And who, you know, it's hard when you own a small business or you're an entrepreneur or you're a sole proprietor because you're doing everything, right? You're doing your own marketing. You're doing your own sales. You have to do all the legal and all the, you know, the accounting and all of the website updates and all of the marketing. I mean, there's a lot to do as, you know, someone who owns their own business and it can be very overwhelming. But sales is a very, very important, if not one of the most important, I won't say the most important, but it's definitely one of the most important parts, right? Because if you have a business and you want it to be successful, you need to get the word out. So even if you're a nonprofit, you know, you're still selling, right? You're still selling and trying to get your product or service out to um, as many people as possible, or maybe you're selling to businesses. It could be as many businesses as possible. So you need to prioritize the sales process. So the sales process uh, um, are things like, you know, making sure you have a list of enough people to reach. You know, everyone knows that most people, it's very um, odd to close someone on the first conversation or introduction to your product, right? In most cases, you're going to have to talk to someone or ha at least expose them to your product or your service four to six times before the, you can actually close the sale, right? So it's not like you're going to call someone up on the phone you're going to tell them about your product and they're saying, oh my God, amazing. I'm going to order like 1,000 of your, um, your widgets. Yes, please. Very unlikely. Um, in fact, you really don't want that because you want someone to be very confident about 
the product that they're purchasing and you want them to feel like it's been a considered purchase. Um, you know, another example, I, I recently heard someone who said, you know, I don't think that we should use a sales deck for our product. And this was a technology product. And I thought, like, why would you not want to use that? And so I asked the person, why wouldn't you want to use the sales deck? Like, that doesn't make sense to me because different people learn in different ways. Even if you just presented it to them, you want to provide a leave behind um, for them to uh, look at it later. And he said, well, someone told me that if I leave um, like a PowerPoint presentation or some kind of presentation with them, they might think about it um, and, you know, find up a bunch of reasons why they didn't want to buy it later. And I did not think that was a very good reason to not have a sales deck um, because if someone is looking at it and thinks that they don't want to buy it the day later, that is not the person that you want to buy your product anyway, right? That is not your ideal client because you want someone who thinks about it and even like a week later or a month later, they're still interested in it. And that means it's a win-win, right? Like you're selling them something that they really value. But that usually takes time. It's not just one time you have to talk to them. It's often two or three times. And if it's not talking to them, it's an email follow-up. It's some kind of um, marketing piece you're presenting to them. It's a presentation. It's, um, you know, a social media post. Um, social media, you know, makes it so amazing for us to connect with people these days. So all of those things are ways that you can interact with your customers. But I think the most important thing is that you dedicate some kind of sales some kind of time to your sales process every week and have a sales strategy. Um, you know, when I say you need four to six interactions, decide what that means for you. And every business is different, right? In some cases, the first interaction might be an email that you send to someone, or it might be a cold call, or it might be, you know, a postcard that you send them in the mail. The second interaction might be a follow-up that you make with them. And that might be a phone call where you offer them, you know, some type of free services or, um, that you just say, hey, I want to follow up and talk to you in person, or you give them a high-level overview of your product. The third might be that you send them a very interesting article, or you send them some details about how you specifically can work with their business. Um, you know, the fourth might be another follow-up email where you talk about, like, the benefits or any objections they may have. And the fifth might be an in-person where you actually meet them. So, but it's different for everyone, right? Because for some people, you know, the first four might be, Social media interactions. Um, every media, every everything is different. If you are selling a retail product, it might be someone sampling your product. You know, there's so it, everyone who sells has a different way of selling, and it's really what makes you feel comfortable um, and makes your clients feel comfortable and confident and to have that trust in you that you're selling them a product that they really need and that they want. So that's really what I talk about when I say cooking is very similar to sales. It's all about planning and having realistic expectations. Um, I used to joke and say, well, the person who says they're a bad cook because they tried to throw the recipe together at the last minute like I used to do, that person's not a bad cook. That person just has real unrealistic expectations. And it's the same with selling. If you go out there and you have an amazing product or service and you haven't talked to anyone about it and you haven't done any marketing about it and no one comes and buys your product, that doesn't mean it's bad. It means that you have unrealistic expectations. Selling and marketing fit together and they're an essential part of building your business. So it's really important that you prioritize that and you take some time to make sure that you know, you're know you dedicating time to your sales process and come up with a sales plan. So it was great talking to you guys today. If you have any questions, you can always find me on my website at soulfulsellingbootcamp.com. I'm Christine Pereira. We also have a Facebook page, which is Soulful Selling Bootcamp, and you can find all of our past Periscopes on YouTube at um, Soulful Selling Bootcamp on YouTube. Okay, thanks, guys.